coming to church, but I'm hoping that others will join us this morning, and um, I, I'm sure they will. Um, if they're not here, let's hope that they're on holiday. I want to greet anybody who's watching online, and um, yeah, we're just here this morning to praise the Lord. We're going to do things a little bit different this morning. We're going to we're going to worship the Lord. We're going to do some intercession. Um, it's we're going to have a good time. So um, let, let's stand, and uh, we're going to pray and. Welcome the Lord. Neil, welcome this morning. Miles, Anna, <laughs> my mother-in-law, hey, hey. Mumda, you guys can call it Carla. We, um, yeah, just welcome you guys all and uh, so happy to have you guys here. So They all look the same. So Let's, uh, let's close our eyes and, and talk to the Lord. Father, as we come this morning, Lord, I'm always so thankful that we can come to you just as we are this morning, um, we don't have to walk through the door and pretend to be anything that we are not. We don't pretend to be feeling anything that we are not. Mm. And as we worship you this morning, Lord, I thank you that you look deep into our hearts, Lord. We want to expose our hearts to you this morning, Lord. And if we don't feel like worshiping this, Lord, this morning, Lord, we want to tell you we don't feel like worshiping you this morning. Lord, if our if we're distracted by so many other things, Lord, um, maybe problems at home or sick people or whatever it is, Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that we can just bring those and leave them at your feet, Lord, yes, Lord. And that you understand, Lord, that we are distracted. But I pray, Father, that at some stage this morning we'll be able to rise above and just worship and praise you, Lord, and just enjoy being in your presence with our arms lifted high and singing to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Singing to you, Lord, a place we long to be. So lead us into that place today, Holy Spirit, into the throne room of God, where we can take everything that's bothering us with our hearts exposed and still become, still come before the King of Kings. We welcome you in this place. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. Let's pray this prayer together. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts, Lord Jesus. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Let's pray that again. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Hold Spirit, come invade us now.
your voice I know the weak are made strong now I know my hope is restored when you speak at your voice I know my chains are now broken I know my Savior has conquered the grave Jesus, Jesus be glorified in the earth be glorified in the earth Jesus your name be glorified hey, Jesus be glorified in the earth be glorified in the earth Jesus your name the names fade away let all the other names fade away still there's only you let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place let all Jesus, Jesus. 
your name I see the enemy fleeing I see the lonely finding home in your arms At your name I know the heartache is over I know the rest I seek is at the cross It's your name your voice, I know the weak are made strong now. I know my hope is restored when you speak. At your voice, I know my chains are now broken. exalted among the nations. attention would be on the Lord Jesus, that every other name would fade out, that it would only be you that we're interested in, only you that we're here to glorify, only you and your needs and what you want, we come to bring you this offering that we sacrifice, we lay aside, we lay down our burdens at your feet, we lay down our worries, we lay down our cares, we lay down our distractions, we lay down our addictions at your feet, we say to you that you are worthy. You are worthy of all our attention. You are worthy of all our worship. All our worship. And every, every tribe and tongue, there are people who you have called to be your children. Every nation called to be your sons and daughters. And our hearts cry out that you would show your name, the wonder of who you are. Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Take your place. We come to worship you this morning, Lord Jesus. As part of our worship, we want to bring you our tithes and our offerings. And today we don't want to we don't want to take it for granted or we don't want to take it lightly. That when we bring you our money, we, we know that what you really want is ourselves, our hearts, our time, our energy, our attention. And so we bring you our money as a symbol of those things and as a test for it. 
So we bring you our offerings this morning and we bring you ourselves. To you I pour it out. To you I pour it out. I pour, I pour it out for you. Praise like oil. For you I pour it out. For you I pour it out. I pour, I pour it out for you. As we pour ourselves out before you in worship, let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away. Until there's only you, let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names fade. Let all the other names fade away. You we've come to see that all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. All the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Our hands are up. Our hands are up. Our hearts are open wide as the sky. Cause we lift you high, Lord. We lift you high. Our hands are up. Our hearts are open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Let all the other names just stay standing for a little bit. I'm not going to talk long because we're going we're gonna to do another part of worship this morning. Um, and uh, I suppose you've noticed when you've come into church on a Sunday morning that we have all these flags. Um, what you've never noticed is the little A4 piece of paper under each flag, which tells you which country it is. So Simon uh, worked hard this week doing that. Thanks, Simon. And um, we, we put that up because what we want to do this morning is we'd like to intercede Pray for the countries.
the flags. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into a time of worship and we're going to, we're going to pray for these countries. And I'll tell you what's going to happen is you might, you might get stuck at one country and feel like the Lord's laid this country on your heart and you want to pray for them. And then what I would like you to do is throughout the week continue to pray for them. Because, you know, there's believers in all over the world that are praying and going to church like us and seeking the lost and seeking Jesus. Um, and there's um, some people in the world, they're not having church like us this morning. We always, we always talk about the persecuted church. In fact, while we were away, um, Open Doors came and told you about the persecuted church um, that don't have an easy time worshiping the Lord. And you know, you can talk about Jesus all the time, and the world will not have a problem with you talking about Jesus. But when you talk about the resurrected Jesus Christ, the world has a problem with that because it turns the world upside down. And so when we pray this morning, when we go and pray for these countries, I want you to go and pray for the resur that they would know the resurrected Jesus Christ and whatever else the Lord lays in your heart. And then if you feel anything for any of those countries, what you need to do is just send me a WhatsApp because we just want to keep, if the Lord has a word over those countries, we can send, we can send it to um, Christians or missionaries that we know in that country. If you come to pray for Brazil this morning, we put out on the prayer group this morning that Pastor Goretsch is not doing so great. So we'd like you to pray for her this morning. And then the other thing I'd like to do is, is Hannah is back, and she was in Norway, so we've got the Norway flag up, but we always had the Norway flag up. And I'm going to ask Hannah to go and add the um, Papua New Guinea flag for us right now. So, Banner, you're nice and close. Will you hold the ladder for us? And Hannah's going to go, and this is another country that the Lord has allowed us to do missions in. And so we're going to add them to our prayer list this morning. And um, so as Hannah goes up, Lord, we just bring Papua New Guinea before you, Lord. Because in that country, Lord, there's people like us that love Jesus. That preach the resurrected Jesus Christ, the Messiah that saves the world. And Lord, our heart is that everybody in Papua New Guinea will know about Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. And we put that flag up as a prophetic act that a missionary from our church has gone out there and we will continue to pray for Papua New Guinea as we, whenever, pray for Papua New Guinea. So as the worship team plays this morning, just walk around and pray for the different countries. There's information on there, there's prayer points. Um, we'll see how long it takes. If you want to sit in your chair, grab a country, see their prayer points and come back and sit in your chair. Whatever you feel like you want to do this morning, but that's going to be part of our worship this morning, intercession. Okay, Kristen says I need to explain why we have these specific flags in our church and why we don't have other countries. We, we haven't picked and choose, but we've either had missionaries from those countries come here or we've sent people to those countries. So um, that's why we have these flags and we'd love to add more. In fact, we have to add one more flag I forgot about Lebanon, but Miles went and did mission work in Lebanon for a couple of months last, no, the year before. So we need to add that flag too. So church, please feel free to walk around and just intercede for these countries. We lift them before you, Lord, the resurrected Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
house to be shaken for the boldness to carry your name to the nations your signs and your wonders to go now before us the weight of your glory to rest as we live place where your name is exalted this morning, every place where your name is lifted high, we ask that your spirit would fall on the people, that they would know the resurrected one, Jesus' name. morning church how are you all this morning anybody have a country laid on their heart that they feel like this is who i'm going to go pray for when i get home for the week that's good there's a couple of you that's that's great um one thing i know is that we need more prayer definitely need more prayer and um how many of you are following one heart 50 days of prayer um if we we put it on wellspring prayer group um if you're not on the Wellspring prayer group, we actually need to get you on there if you want to get. We, we load all the prayers for the church. We don't put it on Wellspring communication, but we put it on the Wellspring prayer group. But there's a, there's a, a One Heart prayer guide, and uh, we're in week two, day eight. And um, um, it basically, um, this One Heart is that we would be one. And so it's a, it's a prayer guide for reconciliation. And we know that we need reconciliation in our country, we actually need reconciliation in the whole world. And I would like to just read this morning's um, prayer, um, what do you call it, guide, prayer guide for one heart. And I want to encourage you to get it and then just follow it. Um, I had skipped a few days and then I was at cell, and our cell leader, I won't mention Carsten's name, but he, he's, he kind of wrapped us over the knuckles and in a nice way, Carsten, and I realized I need to take this more seriously. So, but I didn't mention your name, so it's okay. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. Acts, Acts 17.26 All human beings are descendants from Adam and Eve, one bloodline, the Bible is very clear that God loves all humans equally and does not show favoritism or partiality. There are no racial distinction. There was no racial distinction until after the flood and the building of the Tower of Babel. Everyone spoke the same language. However, because they did not believe in God, their oneness resulted in rebellion against God. God intervened and confused their language. It caused the people to be scattered across the earth and to form distinct nations. God began his work of redemption. He chose Abraham and separate, separated him from his idolatrous background and promised to make him a great nation in which all the families of the earth will be blessed. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. It was the first indication that God wanted a people that was separated unto himself. His choice was not based on race, but on faith. And we need to remember that, that his choice was not based on faith, ach, race, but on faith. This was God's pattern. In the Old Testament, people were divided between believers and unbelievers, between Israelites who believed in God through the revelation of himself through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses, and the nation of Israel, 
and then the pagan nations who believed in their own gods. In the New Testament, all people can believe in God through Jesus Christ. As far as God is concerned, there are only two races on earth, those who have chosen to be part of his family and those who haven't. Racism as we know it is purely a human institution. It is believed that humans are divided into separate and exclusive biological um, entities called races which inherited physical traits of personality, intellect, morality, culture, and behavioral features, and that some races are genetically superior to others. The term is also applied to political, economic, or legal institutions and the, system, and the systems that engage in the discrimination on the basis of race or reinforce racial inequalities in wealth, income, education, health care, civil rights, and other areas. God makes no such distinction, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Romans 10 verse 12. And then there's a couple of scriptures to meditate on there. You're going to have to go and read that. But I'm going to read the corporate prayer. And it says this, Father, we humble ourselves before you. We have sinned against you and against our fellow humans through racism. And we turn from our wicked ways. We need your help to stand against the evil of racism. Please deliver us from this evil. We pray for the work of your Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our families, in our churches. Search our hearts, Lord, and convict us of our sin. Give us a new heart that will be one as you and your Son are one. Amen. Yeah. And then they end off with a quote that says, The devil knows what he does in hindering the communion of believers. In doing this, he hinders the progress of grace, bringing Christians into a declining, wasting state. And, um, and that's why I want to encourage you to join One Heart 50 Days of Prayer. It's day eight. It's not too late to jump on and start praying and um, praying that we will become one, um, not just in South Africa, but across the world. And um, yeah, so how many of you are reading Acts at the moment? We're going through Acts. Um, I'm going to read from, well, Kristen's going to read Acts 4 for us today. So I want you to just sit and, and listen as she reads Acts 4. And then next week you can read, um, if you want to read Acts 4 and 5 or Acts 1 to 5, um, I'm probably going to preach out of Acts 5. It's a fun one, Ananias and Sapphira, um, two people who die in church. Um, should be fun. Um, we'll see what God teaches us out of that. But babe, would you come and read this morning? And just as she reads, just let the, let the Lord... Um, yeah, you're going to read the whole chapter. It's only 300 verses. So. Okay, before I read, I, I want you to stand up because he just read something and I don't want you to not pay attention. So I'm going to interrupt the whole thing and stand up and say hello to somebody. Um, no, you can do that. All right, good job, church. You can take your seats. If you'd like to follow along, you can open up to Acts chapter 4. I'm glad that you guys are being so friendly with each other and showing unity. Are there any new people this morning? Anybody who's never been to Wellspring before? No? What would Sheldon say to you? Huh? What's a problem, eh? All right. Acts chapter 4. I did not prepare. I didn't know. Okay. The 
priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in, Je proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. The next day, rulers, the elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else. For there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were un unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that they have performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. There's a lot of these and days. They, the Sanhedrin, could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider these threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. That's like the song we just sang. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. What an exciting experience it must have been. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. For from time to time, those who owned the land or houses sold them, brought the money from the assails and put them at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet.
My glasses, there we go. <laughs> my mother once did that, was looking for her glasses, and I was like, Mom, they're on your head. Anyway, um, did you see some of what we've done this morning already in Scripture here? I love that, that the believers were one in heart. And we have to ask ourselves, are we one in heart? And then I'm not just talking about um, this morning in Wellspring Ministries. So um, usually after church, there's a mad rush to, um, to pick and pay. And when you're in pick and pay, you meet all the other people that have done a mad rush from their churches to pick and pay. And when you see somebody, say, from the Enchia Church or from Fontana or the, the Catholic Church, do you look at them and go, wow, they're in another church, they're different to us, or do you go like, we have something in common? Are we one? And we have to be one. All believers are one. We're, we're together in this. In fact, we should just high-five ourselves. And those who aren't getting high-fived will wonder why they aren't getting high-fived. And it's because they're not believers yet. But I think we should go back to a secret handshake. No, let's not do that. Let's not do that. That's a bad joke. I, um, I was using a commentary this morning, ach, this week, not this morning, not much happened this morning, um, by, um, oh my word, now I can't even remember his name, I can only remember his initials, oh, N.T. Wright, okay, so his, um, most people know him as Tom Wright, and I was just reading his commentary on, on Acts this week as I was just preparing, I'll probably just use it for the whole of Acts, um, so if you want to try to find that commentary, you can too. Um, but, he, but he made this statement, and he said this, I just know that when you come to speak or write about Jesus, about the cross and his resurrection, about the new life which can break chains and set people free, there seems to be powers around the place which do their best to oppose what you are doing. Okay? Anytime you preach, uh, uh, forget preach, throw that word out, Anytime you talk about Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, what he has done for you, whether you're sharing a testimony or sharing a scripture, whether you're writing it down or posting it on Facebook, wherever it is, I want you to know that there will be an opposition to it. And it might not be the rulers of this world, the powers and principalities, so it might not be on a spiritual level, but it will be through people as well. Somebody will oppose it. Remember that that is, the divi that is unfortunately the division. You're either a believer or you're not a believer. But in Acts 2, and we, we read it last week, I think it was Acts 2, 38, Peter wrote, he said this, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And Acts is really about that, is that the, the story, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is for everyone, okay? It's not just only for us who, are, who believe already. It's for everyone. So we actually, it's our attitude towards even those that don't know Jesus is one of, it should actually be one of, they just don't know yet. But Jesus has died for them too. I came to know Jesus when I was... Um, 16 years old. I, I feel like I'm blessed that I came to know Jesus when I was 16. My gran came to know Jesus in her 80s. Hey? It was so special. We'd visit my gran, and, and I don't know what kind of a relationship she had with Jesus. I loved my gran. Um, she, she died at the age of 99. She really wanted to get to 100. She wanted to get her letter from the queen. But one day I, I wrote her a letter because she was, she, she was deaf. And I didn't want to be in her little flat shouting, Gran, do you know Jesus? Have you given your life to him? Because I figured that would be... So I wrote her a little letter. We visited her one day and we knew that we'd go back and visit her the next day. So I wrote her a little letter. You probably wrote it for me though because of my handwriting. And um, I wrote the letter and I gave it to her and, and we, we left. And when we came back, we had a letter back from her. And she told us, she assured us that she knows Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And whenever she talked about Jesus, she'd just start crying. And it, it was really cute to see. So she, but she got to know him late in life. You know, I was 16, she was 80. But the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, this good news, the resurrected Jesus is for everyone. 
There's, nobody is excluded, no matter how long and how far they have run from God. I love watching testimonies sometimes of people who have just tried absolutely everything and then eventually just landed up back at Jesus Christ. And I, I love the fact that Jesus has never left them at any part of their journey. He just, he's watching, he's drawing. And, and then there's this big celebration, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago in, 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 um, in church, um, when people celebrate, or the angels celebrate when people come to know Jesus. But here's the thing, church, I need to warn you that if you speak about Jesus, teach about Jesus, give a testimony, there will be opposition. Okay, so please don't be surprised when you put some truth out on Facebook and you have 300 people suddenly flood your inbox or your comments uh, and, and totally make you, tell you you're judgmental or, or something like that. When I read Acts, I read, I read about guys that speak the truth. Peter looked those guys in the eyes and he said to them, you guys crucified Christ. I mean, these guys... I don't think we understand the power that the religious leaders had in those days. They were really at the top of the food chain. They, they, they controlled everything, economics, um, whatever, laws, God's laws. They, they enforced God's laws. Man, people thought these guys, you know, like they do with pastors, you think I have a red telephone in my office and um, I, I just have this hot line to God. No, I have the same line that you have. But they thought, you know, when these guys stopped on the side of the street to pray, they thought, yeah, man, God's just listening to them now. And, and they really, um, the, the priests and the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders, those guys, they, they carried some, some clout back then. So for Peter to stand up and boldly say to them, listen, you guys crucified Christ. What they didn't like is the fact that Peter was telling them, you've crucified Christ and he's risen again. Because they say to them in the scripture, they say, um, by what power or what name did you do this? Hey? I mean, because here's, here's Peter and John standing here, and then there's this, this guy who's 40 years old standing next to him, and he can't stand still because all of a sudden he can walk. I mean, these things are suddenly working. I'm, I'm sure he was just like one of those crazy people bouncing around. This was just like the coolest thing for him. And here's this guy standing there, and they ask, by whose power did you do this? And when they say Jesus Christ, you know, they hated that answer. And they knew that they couldn't come against that answer because of this guy next to them. They realized right then, when, when Peter tells him, man, the stone you builders rejected has become the cornerstone. When they quoted scripture to them, I'm sure that even their eyes were opened, these religious leaders, and then they realized, oh snap, we did reject the Messiah. We did crucify the Messiah. Look at these signs and wonders. We have never done anything like that. It has to be Jesus Christ who walked on earth, who did these exact same miracles. We thought we had killed him, but he's resurrected. He's still living today. Isn't it cool that when we talk about Jesus, church, we don't talk about somebody who was? Hey? We talk about somebody who is. When we talk about the things that Jesus has done for us, it's not a tribute. He still does those things today. He's alive and well today. That's who we talk about. And these guys just hated the fact that they were talking about Jesus, the resurrected King. Let me, let me see if I can find my notes here quickly. I wrote here, without the resurrection of Christ, there is no book of Acts. And actually the truth of the matter is, without the resurrection of Jesus, we wouldn't be here this morning. I'm not sure what we would be doing this morning. I know that I would be pretty morbid if, if, if there was no resurrection of Jesus because what would I... I would have no hope. What would I be living for? Huh? To, to get a salary at the end of the month? whoop de do. That only lasts so long. So Peter talks to these guys. This guy's bouncing around behind them. And they, they put Peter and John in jail, hey, for the night, hey? Then they call these guys out, and then they say to them, they say, um, 
we're going to need to stop you from, from talking about what you're talking about. We're going to need you to stop talking about the resurrected Jesus Christ. Okay? And, and I think this still happens today. Um, world rulers would not want you to talk about the resurrected Jesus of Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ, because it takes the attention off them. And this is what was happening. This guy bouncing around was really just taking the focus of these religious leaders who were all that up until that point. And suddenly the focus was on this guy who was healed because they all knew him. Okay, This was a living testimony. They'd all walked into the temple. And maybe the religious leaders had given him money until Peter and John came past. And they said, well, we've got nothing to give you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, stand up and walk. And then there he was bouncing around. But suddenly they realized that they're not, that, they're not all that anymore. People are not going to be giving them all the attention that they want. So they're like, guys, just can you stop talking about the resurrected Jesus Christ? Just stop doing it. And you can imagine at that point, why would you ever stop talking about Jesus Christ? If we had somebody um, in a wheelchair this morning and they suddenly stood up, you would spend longer in pick and pay. Why? Because <laughs> you'd be telling everybody about what you had just seen in church this morning. Do you know that guy down the road? Do you know, oh, oh um, what's a good name um, that nobody uses? Um, you know old Andre down the road? Man, that guy was in a wheelchair for 30 years. Look at him now. And everybody would know him. You'd be telling everybody. That's what Peter and John were doing. That's what all the believers were doing. And they're like, how can we keep quiet? This guy's bouncing up and down. And he's saying, how can I stand still? And so they say, man, do you want us to listen to God? Or do you want us to listen to you? Now you ask a religious leader that question. They know what the answer is. They're not going to tell you who you should listen to. Because they know they're going to say to you, well, actually you should be listening to God. But we need you to listen to us so that you can stop talking about the resurrected Jesus so that we can still have our positions of power and authority and influence. And the part that really excites me is how the believers go back. And as we look through Acts, I want you to look at this church. We, we want to act like they did in we want to be like the believers in the Bible did. We want to have that same boldness that they had to proclaim the words, the, the, the truth of Jesus Christ. But we also want to have that community. So they come back uh, on their release. Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. Okay? And you can imagine there's lots of muttering going on. I can't believe they said that. But then they pray. How many of you took note of this prayer that Kristen read just now? So they pray this. They say, Sovereign Lord, you said you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. Or, or they said you made the earth and the you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by your Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? Because they're seeing this right now. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord. You see, they didn't take this personally as against themselves. They saw it personal. I mean, these guys are trying to shut God up. They're trying to stop God from doing his thing. Against the Lord and against his anointed one, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. They love talking about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the resurrected Messiah. They had met him. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, and they talk about how Jesus was crucified. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. So, and they thought they were doing what they wanted to do, but they did what your power and your will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider these threats. Okay, so if we, this morning, if I came into church and I said to you guys, man, they called me, um, I don't know, into Parliament, and they, they asked me a question, and I stood up, and I stood for Jesus, and they told me to keep quiet, and, and they know everybody in Wellspring Ministries. They know your names, your telephone numbers. They asked us for the church um, a membership list, and, and that's it. We're all in trouble, and we started to pray this prayer. Now, Lord, consider their threats. What would the rest of that prayer look like for us? Would we sit here and go, now, Lord, consider their threats? Would you look after us as your servants? Would you protect us? 
Would you surround us with your angels? Would you strike them dead like maybe David would have prayed? But these guys pray something totally different. Because church, this is the answer. Now Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Hey? Lord, they're trying to shut us up. Give us, just give you, enable your servants to speak your word with greater boldness. Just give us those words. And I think we need to be praying that every single day. When I stand in front of the mirror in the morning and I'm brushing my teeth, I need to pray, Lord, give me, give me your servant the boldness to speak your word. Give me great boldness today. Because church, we all know the truth of the matter is as much as we're not getting locked up in prison or getting persecuted, um, physically getting beaten, some people do experience that, but, but it's hard to go out there and preach about the resurrected Jesus Christ. To tell somebody, I, I actually have the answer to your problems. It's hard. And we need to ask the Lord to give us great boldness. So stand in front of the mirror tomorrow morning. And ask the Lord to give you great boldness to speak His word. And then they ask Him, God, for another thing. They say this. They say, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. They said, Lord, we can give us boldness to speak your words. And then we pray, Lord, that there would be signs and wonders would follow the speaking of your word. In fact, there's a scripture, um, 1 Corinthians. Paul wrote this. He said, um, where's Corinthians New Testament? I'm just joking. Okay. He said this. He said, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Okay. So we don't just talk, 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 but there's power too. And we know from reading Acts already and covering it last week, that the Holy Spirit came and filled them and gave them more boldness. He filled, there was an infilling of the Holy Spirit and they stepped out and they preached the word of God with more boldness. And then people started to, miracles start to happen. And, and as we read Acts now, you're going to see more and more miracles happen, more and more amazing things that people were talking about. And they were like, okay, so Sheldon is talking about the, the resurrected Messiah. We've never really believed him before, but, but he prayed for this guy, and this guy is healed. Uh, what do we do with the guy that's healed? The problem with the church nowadays is we want God to heal people so that we can look good or so that Wellspring can look good. So I want to encourage you this morning. I pray that we, we see more healings outside of the church than we see inside of the church. How's that? Can we pray that? That, we, that we're reaching more people outside of this church than inside of this church. Because we're a happy, holy huddle, yeah? We all know Jesus. We all know the truth. But when you go out there, preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Ask Him for that boldness. And then ask the Lord that signs and wonders will follow. Not so that you are the hero, but that people will know that what you spoke about is true. That Jesus truly is the resurrected Messiah. After they prayed, the place where they meeting, were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is the second time that the Holy Spirit has come on them and they've spoken the word of God boldly. Maybe next week I'll do verse 32 before I go on to Ananias and Sapphira. <laughs> we'll do about the believers sharing their possessions. But I want you to think about community uh, this week too because we are a beautiful community of believers. We're actually a beautiful community of believers across the world. And that's why we can put prayer requests on our, on our prayer group for people in Brazil, people in, in America right now. What's his name? J.C. von Rensburg. We can pray for that guy. You know, uh, I don't even think I know the guy, but I can pray for him. And God answers prayer. We're a big community. So the question is this morning... Um, How many of you want to speak boldly about Jesus Christ? Like, do you want to? Are you like, are you like game? Because most of us know what our, our workplace looks like. Like, it's really tough for me to talk about Jesus 
in my office. So, it's a joke. <laughs> Someone will work on forgiveness. It's all good. But some of you know how hard it is to go to your workplace and talk about Jesus. I worked for um, a Muslim. When I worked at Essa Motors, it was run by a Muslim. 50% um, of the people there, well, maybe not 50, 30% of them were, were Muslim. It was hard to always talk about Jesus Christ. Hey? I did make a difference there, though. Everybody stopped swearing around me. And I remember that one day I went and spoke to the, the girls at the counter, and I said to them, um, maybe it was after somebody got healed in church, but you know, you can't keep quiet. So I'm like, hey, do you guys see um, miracles there at the mosque? Does, do people get healed? I was just looking for an in, inroad. But ask the Lord to give you the boldness to speak, to go and tell them about Jesus. But you don't just do it alone. Ask the Lord for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I believe this, that if I'm standing in a place and I'm willing to open my mouth for Jesus Christ, that all I need to do is open my mouth. And He will do the rest. Because God doesn't want me to look like an idiot for Him. But if I'm willing to be bold and speak, and if I open my mouth, He will give me the words to speak in that moment. And then we're going to be, see miracles. We're going to see the gifts of the Spirit flow. We're going to see prophetic word. We're going to see words of wisdom, words of knowledge. We're going to see people get healed. Gift of faith. Your faith is going to increase. We're going to come on a Sunday morning and there's going to be so many testimonies that I won't get a chance to, to preach and I'm going to go home all sad because I had this amazing word. I'm looking forward to those days, church. So if you want to go out and preach the Word of God boldly, I want you to stand up because we're going to do a prophetic act again this morning. And you're like, Sheldon, but you did this last week in church. But I read about this last week in church too where the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke boldly. And then here we read about another fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit. And I've said so many times in church, so sometimes you might see me in a public place even and I put my hand on my head. And sometimes I just ask God to transform me by the renewing of my mind. But other times I stand there and I say, Holy Spirit, would you fill me afresh? I need you. I need the boldness to do what I need to do in this world that is so hard and so stubborn, that is so blind to the truth. Would you give me the boldness? So I ask you to put your hand on your head as a prophetic action and just say, Holy Spirit, would you fill me from the top of my head to my toes, a fresh infilling of you. Give me the boldness, Holy Spirit, to speak the truth of the resurrected Messiah that the world will know that I believe in Jesus Christ and He is resurrected. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is not dead. He is not buried. He is alive and well. And He loves them. And Father, as we pray that You would give us the boldness, great boldness to preach the Word of God, that you would come as well and we would see miracles take place around us, Lord. That we would see people get healed, um, restored, made whole, Lord Jesus. We, we, we long to see more of that. We long to see more of our resurrected Messiah here on earth. Give us the boldness, Lord. You have chosen us. You have put us in a place such as this. Our boundary lines are here, Lord. Right now you have placed us here. Would you use us here, Lord? May we be bold. May we not be quiet. We pray it in Jesus' name. And Lord Jesus, we will continue to tell the world about you until you call us home or the whole world knows about you. There's that scripture in um, Ezekiel, Lord, where you tell, you gave me that prophetic word once. You said, I will make you just as hard as those people. That, don't, that are so stubborn they don't want to hear the Word of God, I'll make you just as stubborn as them and you will continue to preach the Word of God. And I pray, Lord, that we would all be stubborn. That we would not, Lord, fear being rejected by people, fear being laughed at by anybody, but, Lord, that we would continue to preach the Word of God, the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news about Jesus Christ. Give us that boldness, Lord. 
Lord, I honestly standing here and too fearful to say, would you shake this place, Lord? Would you shake me, Lord? Wake me up. Show me what you see, Lord. I just have really just believe that, that, that not all of us are ready this morning. Not all of us are ready to be, have this building shake, which would really wake us up. Not all of us are ready to just say, Lord, use me. I want to be bold for you. And maybe it's because you, you don't think you know enough about the Word of God. Or you don't know God well enough. Or you, you're just such a sinner. Like, why would God want to use me? I want to tell you that those are all lies from the pit of hell and that you can go out and be used by God. There's many examples in the Bible where God used broken people, people who had sinned, and He still used them in His kingdom because they had a heart after His. So just align your heart with God's heart and be bold. And if you feel like you're not ready, and you recognize one of those excuses that I've mentioned, take it before God. Just be honest with Him. But Lord, get us ready. Get us ready for this harvest field. You told us to pray to the Lord of the harvest, for the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Lord, I pray that everybody in this church would be a worker in the kingdom of God, boldly proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And that we'd see more miracles outside of this building, Lord then we'd see inside, Lord, so that nobody can say, Wellspring Ministries has got what I want, that they'd say that Jesus Christ has got what I want. So more miracles, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. More souls in the kingdom of God. May we, be, um, may we win souls for your kingdom, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, can we have some tea and coffee together? I'm going to end right there. And um, you guys are more than welcome to join us for some fellowship there. And we'll see you guys next week. It's going to be good. Read chapters four.